Welcome back, I'm Laura Allen. I'll be bringing you a roundup of the latest sport in Cardiff in just a moment, but first continue to update you with all the news happening in the city. A new report shows Welsh prisons have dealt with 53 incidents of rebellion in the last four years. Figures from the Ministry of Justice show the number of incidents has risen by more than 200% since 2012. Park Prison in Bridgend had the highest number of problems within discipline, with 38 in 2014 to 15. Cardiff Prison saw two incidents, in four years. South Wales Police is the first police force in the UK to sign up to the principles of the United Nations Convention of the Rights of the Child. The convention is an international agreement that sets out rights for children and young people. Almost every country in the world has signed the agreement, including the UK government back in 1991. The signing at a special ceremony means the force recognises that all children have these rights and it has to protect them. The build-up to Euro 2016 is well underway, with the Welsh team confident of their success in France in the summer. Sky Sports journalist Bryn Law followed the Welsh team throughout the whole journey of their qualification and has written a book about the experience. Bryn was in Cardiff Waterstones today to sign his book and talk about the nation's chances in June. Callum Watson reports. Bryn Law has followed the Welsh football team for as long as he can remember, but this is the first time during his lifetime that Wales have qualified for the European Championships. Qualification was a huge success for the team, but it didn't always look like it was going to turn out so well. Five minutes into the first game in Andorra, and Wales were incredibly already a goal behind to, to well, the, the weakest or the second weakest nation in, in world football. I mean, it's, it's not a nation, it's, it's a small place near Spain, basically. So things were looking really bad. Five minutes in, I was beginning to think already that the diary's not even going to get past this first game if things don't improve here, which was completely unexpected because everybody anticipated Wales would win that match. But luckily, they came through at the end of that one with a goal nine minutes from time, and after that... And then yes, they just went on from there, didn't they? Well, it kept going, that was a great thing. Yeah, and there were two key elements in terms of success. I think it was the fact that they kept lots of clean sheets, so defensively they were very strong, and then add to that the, the element of the Gareth Bale factor a guy who will score a goal. So if you don't concede a goal and you've got a fellow in the team who invariably will score a goal, you've got every chance of, of making progress. And the combination of those two factors um, you know, proved really successful on this, on this last occasion. The draw saw Wales put into a group with Russia, Slovakia and England, a group that Bryn thinks Wales can advance from. It's not the worst, not the hardest, well, I say this, you know, ahead of the tournament, but it doesn't look like the hardest group. Um, I think Northern Ireland and the Republic of Ireland are both in tougher groups. However, it's still there are three other good sides in it. Um, it remains to be seen how good, perhaps, but it could have been worse, definitely. I think, and with the fact that three teams go through in most instances, only only eight teams go out of the tournament after the group. So 16 go through, so you know you have got a real chance of making further progress. So there is a chance of, of, of going into the knockouts, I've got to say. Law was in Cardiff to promote his book, Zombie Nation Awakes, a book which sees the reporter share his experiences of his time with the Welsh team during qualification. Well, I've got a, I get a good view, obviously, from the inside because I'm working with people within the camp, the players, the, the uh, coaching staff, all the, all the people involved on a, on a match day. So I get, I, I'm privileged to see it from that side of things. So you maybe get a slightly different view. But I still remember what it is like to watch the match as a fan. And um, I have plenty of pals who are still watching the games as, as supporters who were in the away end in Bosnia, for instance. So hopefully I get... I still have the ability to see it from both perspectives and on that basis hopefully I've told an interesting story. The one thing I can guarantee, the book does have a happy ending. Callum Watson for Cardiff's local news, Waterstones. Football now and Cardiff City take a break from action this weekend due to the international fixtures. But next up for the Bluebirds are two promotion rivals. They face fifth place Derby at home a week on Saturday. That's followed by a Tuesday night game against league leaders, league leaders Burnley. Welsh international Sam Warburton, Gethin Jenkins, Gareth Anscombe and Tom James all return to the starting lineup as Cardiff Blues pace Benetton Treviso in the Pro 12 at the Arms Park tomorrow. Head coach Danny Wilson makes a total of seven changes to the side that defeated Munster as he recalls his internationals after Six Nations duty. Fly half Anscombe returns to the team to partner international teammate Lloyd Williams at halfback. Wing James is the top try scorer for the Cardiff Blues this season with eight in all competitions. Captain Gethin Jenkins 
Jenkins is back in the front row with Warburton, who's named an open side flanker. Cardiff RSC play Pontypridd in the Premiership on Sunday. The game is a 2.30 kickoff at Sardis Road. Cardiff are 89th in the table and Pontypridd are the defending champions and are at the top of the table, a few points difference above Ebu Vale. Scientists at Cardiff University are to run the World Half Marathon, but with a difference. They'll be doing it aboard a ship 8,000 miles away in the Indian Ocean. As thousands of runners and elite athletes descend on, Welsh, on the Welsh capital this weekend to run the World Half Marathon, Professor Ian Hall and Professor Steve Barker from the University School of Earth and Ocean Sciences will run the race on the heli deck of their research ship off the coast of South Africa. It means they'll circle the ship 328 times, more than 200 staff, students and alumni from Cardiff University are running as part of the team as part of team Cardiff in the event. It's a big weekend for the Cardiff Devils. They now return turn their attention to the playoffs having finished second in the Elite League and runners up in the Challenge Cup. Their first playoff game will be at the Ice Arena Wales on Saturday against the Dundee Stars with their return to Scotland on Sunday. Former Glamorgan wicketkeeper Adrian Shaw has joined, joined the Welsh country's coaching team under new head coach Robert Croft. Shaw ha, was a teammate of Croft's in Glamorgan County Championship winning, Championship's winning side of 1997. Former captain Croft was promoted to the top role after Toby Radford left in December last year. Meanwhile, Glamorgan officially start their pre-season tomorrow. They welcome Gloucestershire to the Swalex Stadium. Today, some of their players have been taking some time away from the credit to give out some Easter cheer. Matthew Harris reports. Easter, for some people, it's all about religion. For others, it's all about chocolate. And that's what's been happening here today at Noah's Art Hospital in Wales. As Glamorgan cricket players have been giving out a bit of Easter cheer by giving some Easter eggs to children here at the hospital. Yeah, it's a huge role for, for a Glamorgan cricketer to be seen um, out supporting great charities like the Noah's Ark Appeal. Um, I think it was one of Ian Botham's brainchilds, Noah, Noah's Ark Appeal. Um, and it's hugely important for us to, to get out there and, and give back some Easter eggs and some goodwill to all the children. And you are an idol to seven children. Good to see their eyes light up when you give them that Easter egg. Yeah, having children and myself, it's, it's very important to have those kind of role models and figures in their lives. Um, you know, and Easter's what that's all about. Um, and hopefully as a Glamorgan cricketer, I can sort of be seen as a bit of a role model and, and give something back. And Easter's coming up, that means one thing, the cricket season's around the corner. How are you feeling for it? Excited, yeah. Um, apprehensive as well, you know. We never really know what's going to happen, but, you know, the smell of freshly cut grass around Sophia Gardens and the Swaylek Stadium is huge. Um, the squad is in fine fettle, so um, hopefully we can, we can start off the season really well. And has Robert, Robert been putting his uh, stamp on the squad so far? Having known Robert for, for a very long time now, um, you know, he's got his own style of coaching, you know, very passionate, um, very focused, very driven about what he wants from Glamorgan and, and what it takes to become a Glamorgan professional. Um, that's rubbing off, off, off on all of the squad and um, hopefully we can repay some of that faith. And the new signing settling in well? Yeah, there's been a couple of new signings. Um, Tim van der Guten is still away with Holland on the T20 World Cup. Um, but Nick Selman, the young Australian batsman, has come in and settled nicely into the squad. So yeah, fingers crossed, we're, we're looking okay. I then spoke to Glamorgan cricketer Will Bragg on the importance of doing events in the community and how he thinks Glamorgan are going to do this season. Yeah, definitely. I mean, the cause is absolutely brilliant. I mean, what, what they do for the community and the children in uh, South Wales is, you know, unbelievable. Um, and yeah, just to get out of training and, and come and support this great charity is, um, yeah, touching. And you have a lot of young fans coming to the ground. Nice to go out and meet them as well? Yeah, obviously, um, the more fans that we can attract to the Swaylet, the better. Um, to grow cricket in South Wales, I think, is something that needs to be grown a bit more than it is compared to other sports at the moment so yeah every little helps and talking of the season how did you enjoy your trip to desert springs yeah it was obviously nice to get away from uh, typical south wales weather um the weather over there was brilliant you know the facilities were decent um to get some net practicing on, on grass was uh, obviously a big advantage going into the season and are you looking forward to just getting down and getting going now? Yeah, I mean, it's preseason has gone quite quickly actually, so um, it is. I think it's time now just to get mentally in the right mental frame, if you like, uh, to hit the ground running with the season and and, and try and uh, succeed in what we built last year. 
The children have really enjoyed the visit of the Glamorgan Cricket players here today and they can look forward to the season starting now in just a couple of weeks' time when Glamorgan play Leicestershire at home at the Swaylag Stadium. This is Matthew Harris for Cardiff's Local News from the Noah Arts Children's Hospital. That's what's been happening in Cardiff's local news. We're back later with another update for you. But for now, from your City TV channel, thanks for watching and we'll see you later. Bye-bye.